Welcome to Milfantes, Portugal. Milfantes rests along the wild Atlantic coast of Portugal between Lisbon and the Algarve. It's bordered by the River Mira, miles of sand dunes, natural preserves, and the ocean. This is a true nature lover's paradise. It's located about an hour's drive from the main toll road, which keeps this historical town from getting too crowded, especially in the non-summer months. Prior to being a tourist town, Milfantes was just a small fishing village with commercial trade developed by King Zhao II. Prior to that, the Romans and Moors existed here, and there are archaeological traces of life dating back to the Neolithic era. Hello, hello. In Portugal, hello, hello. Milfantes means thousands of fountains, which references the many springs in the area. More recently, Villa Nova was added to the name, which is translated as New Village. So today, it's known as Villa Nova de Milfantes, New Village of Thousand Fountains. New Village of Thousands of Fountains is a perfect description of this lush ocean paradise. Strolling through Milfantes in the off-season offers visitors a tranquil alternative to the hustle and bustle of the summer season. Add to that, travel during COVID, and the town is completely yours. Sure, there will be fewer vendors open and available, but this is a town that lends itself to peaceful exploration. The beach town is surrounded by natural beauty, trails, preserves, and it is much more than a summer playground. So a visit during the month of October provides pretty mild temperatures between 68 degrees and 75 degrees without competition for the space on the sand. In fact, you can have an entire beach to yourself along with a seaside cafe for the effort of a short walk. This is a time to slow down to savor, enjoy nature, the beaches, the history of this sweet little paradise. If you're looking for a party, then July and August are the months for you. So we begin our mornings relaxing on the deck of our hip and fun hotel, Selena Milfantes. The hotel group came up with a unique concept of blending a hotel, a guest house, hostel, co-living and co-working space into one establishment. They began in Panama and created their first Selena property in 2014. Today they boast about 70 locations worldwide, focused on sustainability, responsible travel, and incorporating local experiences and activities in one location. The hotel unites their guests with the towns in which they operate through these experiences. So on site, um, the Selena Milfantes offers surf lessons, electric bike rentals, stand-up paddleboard, also known as salt, <laughs> and kayak tours, and then you can have the equipment to rent if you'd like to go it alone. So we checked in online in advance due to COVID regulations, so keep your eye open for that email. Um, and then when we physically arrived, the check-in process was a breeze, just a quick ID verification. So our host gave us a tour of what sections are communal, showed us into our top floor room, which had views of the town, and then steps from our third level private room, we wandered out to an expansive communal terrace. It was filled with couches and chairs. Staff hosted wellness activities with a backdrop of an expansive view of the town, ocean, and river. Views to the right overlook the edge of the village with its mini skyline of traditional homes, church, and fort. And then directly in front of the terrace, we would watch the waves break into the Mira River and then flow to the green countryside just off to our left. This shared veranda became the perfect spot for a morning ritual of absorbing the sunshine while taking deep breaths of fresh air as we drank in the stunning views along with our cup of joe. <laughs> you can be as social as introverted you like in a place like this. Guests were both friendly and respectful of each other.
The Selena staff brewed our fresh coffee each day at the bar on the first level. We enjoyed our drinks on our terrace lookout, even though the bar and the outdoor areas on the ground level, um, they were fun and trendy, we still enjoyed our drinks on the terrace. Now they do offer a shared kitchen if you'd like to make your own drinks or snacks and cook to order breakfast is also available. A hot tub, bar, swinging chairs, these all made for a fun hangout downstairs. And we giggled as we watched a family get completely toasted and silly in the hot tub while their dogs roamed around and greeted guests. Um, this is a pet friendly site. Yoga and guided meditation group classes on the upper deck became private lessons this time of year. It makes it a perfect season to visit for specialized attention at group prices. Our kind instructor explained that they also offered painting and dance classes. And while we're on the terrace, some guests worked at their computers while others played chess, but we all took pleasure in the views and the vibe. This is a great spot to literally just breathe. I could feel myself relax the minute I plopped down on a cozy chair or sofa and just looked out at the views. We spent quite a bit of time here as it has one of the best views of town. Position just steps from the city square in one direction and to the river in the other, the Selena Milfonsis is situated in a prime spot which made our car unnecessary. There was free street parking available right out front, and our car remained parked for the entire three days that we visited. We strolled the half block down to the river and found a wooden trail constructed over the water, a perfect path to view the very edge of town and take photos from a unique perspective. Now you can pick up a free guide at the Tourist Information Center in town, which does include a walking tour, but you won't find this trail listed inside. So it's a good thing you're watching or you might not find out about this little hidden trail. So it begins just to the left of a little restaurant in the parking lot below the Selena. Follow this trail and you'll end up at a lookout point by the old fort where it towers over the rivers, the beaches. It was built in 1599 to defend against pirates. Yep. There were real pirates here. Old lore says that they were even part of the Knights Templar. Think about it, skull and crossbones. Um, and it also was built to protect the entrance to the river. The Sao Clemente Fort is worth viewing and photographing, but it's now privately owned and it's not open to the public. Now, if you backtrack a little and climb the stairs, these are cement stairs to town, you'll be able to find a courtyard with a monument celebrating the first flight between Portugal and Macau in 1924. This is a great little piece of trivia as the town is proud of its place in aviation history. So once you go past this courtyard, turn right at the little street in front now you'll be heading towards the church of Agrecha de Nossa Senhora da Graça, Our Lady of Grace, to appreciate a 16th century building damaged by pirates and earthquakes. It has been rebuilt a few times, but kept the original features of the front and the high altar. Watch the time as we were jolted out of our Zen vibe by the clanging of the church bells right over our head. We were trying to appreciate the quaint and beautiful design. Laughed at it. Laughed at it. Having a heart attack, which is so quiet in town, and then this thing starts going bang, bang, bang. Oh. There is another old church in town, which is a little harder to find. It's named Capella di São Sebastião. It's a small 17th century church dedicated to the saint who protected the town from the plague and other illnesses. Definitely thought-provoking during this age of COVID. Thought about lighting a small candle for our current plague, but it was closed. The old portion of the town is small, and it's worth wandering around to find this quaint little church, even from outside.
After passing the church, we wandered through the whitewashed town, enjoying the architecture and colors of vibrant blue and yellow painted accents surrounding the doors and windows of the small homes. We meandered past local galleries with paintings, handcrafted ceramics, as well as unique little craft shops. It is easy to get lost in the little old town, but if you keep walking, you'll always end up at the fort, the square, or the beach. I highly recommend getting lost. We found our way to the small center of town and selected a cafe in the Largo di Rossio Square. We had some snacks, and an important activity of the day, people watching while enjoying the national culture of cafe life. <laughs> Things move slower in Portugal and this unrushed enjoyment of a cafe stop or two or three is a highlight not to be missed. In fact, there are probably only about four or five cafes open in the old town this time of year. So why not make a goal of visiting them all? Drinks and snacks are usually around 10 euros for two people. We ordered an array of toast and toppings and cafes. We watched two backpackers plan out their trek, tourists strolling past us, and busy locals on their way to work. The cafes are also a great place for an adult beverage later in the day when you need to rest from all the walking, relaxing, or getting lost. Make sure to try the regional Alentasia wines. They're famous throughout the country and maybe Portugal's best kept secret. They're also a great bargain at only three to five euros for a bottle. The expensive stuff can run up to 10 euros. Sample some of the local wines at the local cafes. Just ask for the wine of the house and then find out what it is. You'll be pleasantly surprised at a fabulous glass of wine. Milfontage is a hiking town. If your idea of fun is walking on a path, the side rock cliffs with views of crashing waves that expose stunning geology, then this town is for you. The popular Rota Vincenta Trail includes a network of paths encompassing 400 kilometers of marked routes, including the Camino Historical, Historical Way, and the Trio dos Pescadores, which is the Fisherman's Trail. You can purchase an in-depth trail map at the Tourist Information Center for around 15 euros. Each little bluff is a photographer's dream with twisted rock formations chiseled and carved from the energy of the crashing breakers. There are four popular and easily accessible beaches around town, but a hidden one, Praia do Correiro de Fazenza, which is not marked in the tourist guide, and it's a good thing you're watching this video. It's well worth a 10 minute stroll along the ocean or through the rope marked path in sand dunes. We got a kick out of the few people who managed to find the beach, turn their back up to the waves, don't do that, and then got soaked. Is it horrible that we laughed? <laughs> they didn't get super wet, just, okay, they got soaked. <laughs> but it didn't knock them down. <laughs> Further up the coast, Portugal boasts of some of the largest waves in the world, and you'll see smaller versions here, so be careful. If you want to see the big ones, that's Nazare, N-A-Z-A-R-A, -A -A, the little hyphen. To get to this beach or access the beginning of the trail system, just walk from town along Avenida Marginal. That's the main street along the beach. It'll take you up to a circular drive by the old closed lighthouse marked with unique iron sculpture of the Archangel. This is an award-winning piece by artist Aguilar Oriano. And it depicts an ecological cry and warning about the planet degraded by the hands of humans. Mm -hmm. 
If you continue past the statue and the old closed lighthouse, you'll find stairs to a hidden wooden bar, a Chupanya. It was closed due to COVID-19, but looks stunning tucked behind a small cliff overlooking the ocean. And so cool, just hidden under this lighthouse in Milfontes. Bummer. When you're facing the bar, turn right and you'll be on the path where the trail begins. Continue walking about five to 10 minutes and you'll see the special secluded beach. This hidden beach was so stunning. I stopped right there plopped down on my towel and watched the surf crash against the fluffy sand dunes. When you stop and listen, you can hear the unique sound of thunder as large stones and small boulders crash together under the force of the waves. I was mesmerized as I watched the stones flop on the sand and then disappear into the breakers, only to reemerge on another spot on the beach. This is a place to zen out, enjoy a picnic, and watch the wild forces of nature this time of year. Wow, the rock pile grew. To check out another fluffy sand beach, which is a bit tamer, but still secluded, you can continue past Praia do Carrero da Frazenza, a few more kilometers, and you'll arrive at Praia do Malho. Along the way, stop to enjoy Portinho do Canal, which is the biggest fishing harbor in the county. And this county is big. Milfontes is in Odemera County, which is the largest in Portugal, by land size, not population. If you want calmer water activities like kayaking, SUP, or swimming, then you can just stay in town and head to the riverside beach of Furnace Beach, which was voted best river beach. I enjoyed watching some paddleboarders on the river as we walked back to town. They were the only two on the river, and it was so calm versus the rock thunder we just witnessed. The other two beaches of Faro Beach, which means lighthouse, and Praia da Frequia are known for their gentle waves, easy access, boat trips, and water sports. We saw two families on the beach this time of year and the rest was empty. This is definitely a good time to visit. Stroll around and let nature be your guide and you will be well rewarded. There is so much more to explore in this ocean paradise and historical town, including fresh fish restaurants and family kitchens boasting special recipes, casserole dishes, delicious soups. During COVID in the off season, there were about four open downtown. We were only there for a few days, but we'll be back to explore them all. Now, special note, during COVID, it's important to pre-check in from an email link sent to you by your hotel. I hope you've enjoyed this little trip to Milfontes with me. You know, sometimes I say Milfontes and sometimes Milfontes. That's because in Portuguese, everything is a sh sh sh. <laughs> if you've made it this far, I've included some extra outtakes. Um, some of the videos that didn't quite make it into uh, the video at the beginning. And the stunning thunder of the rocks. I mean, these weren't just rocks. I have my toe next to one in, earlier in the video to show these are mini boulders that are getting smashed around by the waves. So enjoy the sound and zen out with me. Cheers.
hear those rocks just getting that's some powerful waves. to wait for the sun to come back out. Wow, lots of rocks moved. Oh, there's so many now. Wow. Wow, the rock pile grew. talking about right here, like where yep. the edge hangs over. Don't go to the edge. Maybe 10 pounds. 